what time it is. Disclaimer, I am not an attorney, nor do I offer or give legal advice. So please understand that all information that we talk about in any of my webinars are strictly information and educational purposes. And most of it is just personal experiences with things anyway. So please understand this is not legal advice. And may you be blessed on your journey to find your power within these laws. Peace and blessings. All right. Let's take a look at the 12 Federal Reserve Districts. We have number one, Boston. Number two, New York. Number three, Philadelphia. Number four, Cleveland. Number five, Richmond. Number six, Atlanta. Number seven is Chicago. Number eight is St. Louis. Number nine is Minneapolis. We got number 10 is Kansas City. Number 11 is Dallas. Number 12, San Francisco. All right. Now, these are the 12 Federal Reserve Districts. So whatever state you are in will be grouped accordingly. That is your central Federal Reserve Bank that you would go to the bank to if you were a specific banking institution. Now, let's check out the operating circulars. Now, the operating circulars are the Federal Reserve Financial Services are governed by the terms and conditions that are set forth in the following operating circulars. So who is governed by this? The Federal Reserve Financial Services. Okay, they are governed by these terms and conditions. Now, these terms and conditions is broken into categories, or we say operating circulars, and there's 12 of them minus 11, which they have not actually created yet, but they left a spot for it. So let's go over these real briefly until we get to the operating circular we're going to look at today. All right, number one is OC1, and it contains the terms for operating, maintaining, and terminating a master account with the Federal Reserve Bank, as well as general provisions regarding Federal Reserve, I'm sorry, regarding Reserve Bank services applicable to institutions whether or not they maintain a Reserve Bank account. So you have your hyperlink downloads right here. Operating Circular 2 contains the provisions that apply to a financial institution's cash transaction with a Federal Reserve Bank. We have Operating Circular 3, which applies to the handling of all cash items that we accept for forward collection and all return checks that we accept for return. Then we have Operating Circular 4, which applies to clearing and settlement of commercial automated clearinghouses, which is what we call ACHC, ACH transfers, credit and debit items by the Federal Reserve Banks, sending banks and receiving banks. We have Operating Circular 5, which includes the terms under which an institution may access certain services and applications provided by a Federal Reserve Bank and under which an institution may send certain data to or receive certain data from a Federal Reserve Bank, in each case by means of an electronic connection. Okay, we go down here to 6, which is along with subpart B of regulation J applies to funds transfers made through the Fed wire fund service. Okay. Operates circular seven contains the terms under which the federal reserve bank maintains securities accounts and affect transfers of book entry securities for participants operating circular eight, along with subpart C of regulation J applies to the funds transfers made through the Fed Now service. Then we have Operation Circular 9. It says it has been retitled Treasury Investments and Collateral Securing Public Funds. Collateral Securing Public Funds and Financial Interest of the Government to reflect the full scope of its coverage. Amendments to OC9 reorganize policies and procedures without substantive changes to applicable treasury policies and procedures. OC9 now continues, contains three main sections applicable to treasury programs under 31 CFR Part 202, 203, and 225, securing public funds and investments, Part 202 and 203, treasury investments, 
part 203 in pledges of collateral in lieu of surety bonds part 225 we got operator circular 10 contains the terms under which an entity may obtain advances from and cure obligations to or pledge collateral to a Federal Reserve Bank. All right, now this is the meat and potatoes that we are trying to get to. And let's go down here to this right here and click and let's go. All right, let's zoom in. We have here the Federal Reserve Bank operating circular number 10, which regards lending. Okay, this is effective July 16, 2013. Right here in the table of contents, we have the scope, defined terms, advances, interest, repayment of advances, grant of security interest, collateral, maintenance of lending documents, representation and warranties, covenants, waivers of immunity, submission to jurisdiction, remedies upon default, indemnification, miscellaneous amendment notice termination waiver of jury trial status of previous lending agreement then we have some appendixes here all right the first appendix is a finance statement collateral description finance statement collateral description okay i have a video talking about perfecting your interest okay that's what this is going to be pertaining to then we have appendix two terms of control agreement Appendix three, application package for U.S. borrowers. Form of letter agreement, form of certificate, form of authorizing resolutions for borrowers, form of official OC10 authorization list. Then we have appendix four, which is application package for branches or agencies of non-U.S. borrowers. All right, then that's what their packet contains right there. Then we have appendix five, which is an ancillary agreements and all of that good stuff let's check out first like we always talk about definitions so we're going to scroll down here we have the scope this operating scope i mean this operating circular is issued by each federal reserve bank and set forth the terms under which an entity may in accordance with the federal reserve act and regulations promulgated there under by the board of governors of the federal reserve system obtain advances from incur obligations to or pledge collateral to a federal reserve bank defined terms the capitalized terms used hereafter in the operating circular have the meaning defined below account means a master account at the federal reserve bank as defined in operating circular number one issued by such reserve bank do you have advances advances mean an extension of credit to the borrower, not including the discount of paper, pursuant to Regulation A, including any renewal or extensions thereof. Advance means extension of credit. Hmm, extension of credit. They didn't say extension of cash. They didn't say extension of Federal Reserve notes. They said extension of credit. Note that. Advance repayment amount means the amount of an advance plus all accrued and unpaid interest thereon. Adverse claim has the same meaning set forth in section 9.1D. Application package means the application package substantially in the form of appendix 3 or 4 as appropriate, which the borrower, the borrower submits in connection with its agreement to this operating circular. What does bank mean? Bank means the Federal Reserve Bank in whose district the borrower is located, determined in accordance with 12 CFR Section 204-3B, or such other reserve bank which the borrower has entered into a borrowing relationship under this operating circular. Board of Governors, pretty much self-suspicion. Borrower. Borrower means an entity, an entity that incurs an obligation to the bank. Hmm. 
Borrowing custody or BIC arrangement means the arrangement whereby the bank authorizes a borrower or an affiliate of the borrower to retain possession of the collateral as described in Section 7 of this operating circular. They define business day. Certificate means the certificate substantially in the form set forth in the appropriate application package provided to the bank by the borrower. Now, what does collateral mean? It's going to define this for us. Let's check this out. All the borrower's rights, title, and interest in property, wherever located now owned or hereafter acquired, including but not limited to accounts, chattel paper, inventory, equipment, instruments, investment property, general intangibles, documents, deposit accounts, deposit accounts, commercial tort claims, and real property that is a defined on a collateral schedule B identified on the books or records of a federal reserve bank as pledged to or subject to a security interest in favor of the bank or any other federal reserve bank or C in the possession or control of or maintained with the bank or any other Federal Reserve Bank, including but not limited to investment property, but excluding any investment property in any unrestricted securities account maintained at any reserve bank that the borrower may not encumber under the applicable law. Hmm. Let's marinate on that for a minute. They gave us a lot right there, and I hope y'all caught a lot of those key words. All documents, books, and records, including programs, tapes, and related electronic data processing software, evidencing or relating to any or all of the foregoing, and to the extent not otherwise included, all proceeds and products of any and all of the foregoing and all supporting obligations given by any person with respect to any of the foregoing, including but not limited to interest, dividends, insurance, rents, and refunds. They're not playing when they laid out this collateral. The Federal Reserve was not playing when they laid out what is considered collateral for the exchange of what? What did we say that the advances was? The advances was extension of credit. Okay. And then we have the collateral section. Save for time. I'm not going to read all of that. I'm just going to scroll, let you read. Things I want to pick up on, you will see. All right. Now we have the FRB lending documents. Has the meaning set forth in Section 8 of this operating circular. Indebtedness means the total of the borrower's overdrafts, whether intraday or overnight in its accounts and any penalties and charges thereon. Okay, they give the definition of insolvency. Okay, condition of insolvency. I mean, you don't have no money, right? Okay, we're gonna scroll down. Lending agreement means operating this operating circular. Any collateral schedule, each document in the application package executed or furnished to the bank by the borrower and any other agreement or documents executed by the borrower in connection with the operating circular. In each case, as the same may be amended, supplemented, or otherwise modified from time to time. Okay, then we have a letter of an agreement. Means the letter of agreement substantially in the form found in Appendix 3 or 4 as appropriate, pursuant to which the borrower agrees to be bound by the terms of this operating circular. Now we're going to identify obligation. What is the obligation? Whether now existing or hereafter incurred means advanced repayment amounts, indebtedness, any other liabilities of the borrower to the bank or any other reserve bank, including without limitation, any service fees, whether due now or become due, and any expense by the bank 
or its designees may incur too. Okay, we have A, B, and C. I'm going to keep going down a little bit. We see UCC is being defined, right? Unrestricted securities accounts, we mentioned in Circular 7. Now, they also said right here, look, the following terms are used herein as defined in Articles 8 and 9 of the UCC. What is Article 8 and 9 of the UCC? Hmm, check it out. Account. Chattel paper control deposit account documents equipment financial assets financing statement general intangibles instruments inventory investment property record securities account and securities intermediary now what is advances an advance is a request for an advance shall be made to the bank in a form and a time acceptable to the bank. An advance must be secured by collateral acceptable to the bank. Upon the bank's request, the borrower shall submit a written what? Application for an advance. So when we purchase homes and cars, what do they ask us for to submit first? An application, right? Because we're asking for a loan, right? A loan using our what? Credit. The bank may also require the borrower to do what? Execute a promissory note. Huh? Promissory note. Sounds like a retail installment contract as well, right? And or additional relevant agreements, or documents at any time with respect to an advance. Now let's pause right there for a second. Okay. The bank's making of an advance is subject to the terms of the Federal Reserve Act as implemented by Regulation 8. The bank's approval of a request for an advance shall be evidenced by and the evidence, I mean, and the advance shall be deemed made at the time of the bank's record of the credit of the amount of the advance to an account agreed upon by the borrower and the bank. Have a section for interest and how they're going to determine the interest. Okay, we'll go here to repayment of advance. The borrower promises to pay an advance repayment amount when due. Actually and finally collected funds. An advance repayment amount is immediately due and payable on demand without any demand, notice, or other action. Now, what are we repaying on this advance? Credit? Hmm? We're talking about credit here, right? We need an application. Hmm? We need an agreement in the form of a promissory note or anything other similar, right? That's what's required. Notice they said nothing about Federal Reserve notes. Huh, but let's keep reading. All right. We're going to go down here. Grant of security interest. For value received. For value received. Where else do we see this type of language? What about the beginning of a promissory note? Pull out your promissory notes. Check them out. Does it say for value received? And in consideration of the bank permitting the borrower to obtain advances or incur indebtedness, the borrower hereby transfers and assigns to the bank and grants to the bank for itself and as agent for each other Federal Reserve Bank to which, now I added the federal, to which an obligation is or becoming owing. A continuing security interest in and lean, lean on the collateral as collateral security for the timely and complete payment and performance when due. 
whether at stated maturity, by acceleration or otherwise, of all obligations. Hmm. Collateral. The borrower shall ensure that the collateral meets the requirements as the bank may from time to time prescribe and shall deliver, hold, store, and otherwise maintain collateral on such terms and conditions as the bank may from time to time prescribe. Borrowers must keep all collateral schedules current and updated in accordance with the bank's instructions. Okay, now I'm not going to read all of that. We're going to keep on scrolling down. So I just wanted to show you guys these things so that you can go look them up yourselves. Now, what is this? Uh, if collateral is held by an affiliate of the borrower, the borrower may comply with or compel such affiliates compliance with the provisions of this operating circular. Hmm. <laughs> Pertaining to the BIC held collateral. Remember we talked about that? Yeah. All right. So it's a lot of good information here when we start exploring. All right. Now let's look at something else real quick. We slide down through here. Got these covenants, waiver of immunity, Let's see indemnification, the amendment, the notice, termination, governing laws. What does this say right here? Waiver of jury, okay. Previous lending agreement, operating circle. All right, check this out. Here we go. Appendix one. Finance statement collateral description. So any of those that are familiar, familiar with a financing statement or a UCCC1 or a non-UCC, you have a collateral description box, all right? So what they're doing with this right here is telling the borrower how to complete the financing statement, what they want them to put in the collateral description. So here we go. All accounts, okay? So they're leaning all their accounts, Federal Reserve is leaning all of the borrower's accounts. Chattel paper, inventory, equipment, instruments, investment property, general intangibles, documents, and all assets now owned or hereafter acquired that are identified from time to time by the debtor to secured party in writing by electronic means, including CD-ROM, or by any other means agreed by the parties as collateral securing the obligation of debtor to secured party under a written agreement between the parties and all proceeds thereof and all collateral guarantees letters of credit surety bonds and other supporting obligations pertaining to the foregoing and all proceeds thereof. All right, so this is the collateral description of what they are leaning against the borrower. All right, now here's the actual control terms and agreements you see right here, which is Appendix 2. Okay, the reference in our OC10 and what is required. I'm not going to read all of this, I'm just showing it for you to see. The video is already going a little bit longer than I planned, but we're going to keep pushing. Now, you see right here, they have signature lines for what is those? Is that the 12 districts for whichever one this is going to? They already have it printed out for that district to input their information, right? And authenticate that document. Now we have Appendix 3, which is the actual application package for U.S. borrowers. U.S. borrowers designed the capacity to request to borrow funds from their local Federal Reserve Bank should submit the following documents, forms of which are included in this appendix. So if anybody in their local Federal Reserve, right, U.S. borrower, Okay, it's designed the capacity to request funds. They're telling us this is this is what is required. A letter of agreement or certificate, authorizing resolutions, official OC10 authorization authorization list. And these documents are provided to us here. Okay. So when we are dealing with these institutions and we're having to provide an application and a form of collateral, what do you think they are doing with these documents? Huh? Who is the source of the transaction to make everything happen? It's not that financial institution you're dealing with. It's you. All right. 
So I hope this has been enjoyed, meaningful, enlightening, and all that good stuff. And we're going to go ahead and in there. Peace and prosperity. <laughs>